let's review the sentences from chapter 13. The practice and review. Number one, consule se nec te cum, nec cum ilis aliis jungebant. Uh, we got a couple different things. First of all, what stands out to me is we have the subject and the verb right at the first and right at the last. The consuls, they were doing something. Then I have this nec te cum, nec ilis aliis. And that, remember that nec, nec equals neither nor. So the consuls, they were joining, third person, plural, imperfect, active, indicative. They were joining, what were they joining? Themselves, accusative, plural, masculine. Joining, aligning themselves, neither with you nor with those others. So the consuls were aligning themselves neither with you nor with those other men. Number two, totus populos Romanus libertatem amicit. So the populus, what kind of populus? The, the totus populos and the Romanus populos. The whole Roman people, population, they amicit. What did they lose? Their freedom. Third person, singular, present perfect, active indicative. How do you know it's present perfect? What is the word? Amito, a mi tere, a mi si, a mi sum. Where do you get this? Amisit, you get it in the third principal part. And no, you will not find amisit in the dictionary under amisit. You have to know to be able to look at amito. You have to recognize this as the third principal part, otherwise you'll be searching, well, in this specific case, you won't be searching too far because amis comes immediately before amit, but you get my point. <laughs> it's not always that simple. So the whole Roman people lost freedom. Number three, rex malus enim me ipsum capere numquam potuit. The king was able. This is a capere, your present active infinitive, your complementary infinitive. The bad king, for the bad king was never able to take me ipsum, me ipsum. This is your direct object, accusative, singular, masculine. But what does me ipsum? Honestly, we struggle with this. Was never able to take me, me, myself, awkward. But we just don't really have a way to translate this intensive ipsum. Romans, it was easy. It's just me ipsum me, myself, but we don't really speak like that. How do you translate it? Sometimes you just have to leave it out, honestly. For the bad king, but for our purposes, I encourage you to come up with something. For the bad king was never able to um, capture me, myself. Not a good English sentence, but we just don't talk this way. Um, right, it's, it's at a loss. Number four. Ad patrem matremque eorum per illum locum tum fugistis. So, hopefully at the end you've recognized there's the verb fugistis. And the e is the et imus istens. Second plural. Present perfect. Active indicative. You at that point, at that time, tum, then fled. And then, ad patrem matremque eorum to their mother and father. Aorum just means their. It's the genitive plural of a uh, genitive plural, probably masculine in this case, of is, ea, id, per illum locum, through that place. So, to the, their mother and father, through that place, at that time, you fled. I think it sounds better in English to put, say, you fled at that time, first. Uh, but that's okay. De animos creant et eos in corpora hominum e kylo mitunt. We've got two sentences here. How do I know? Because as I was reading along in Latin, I saw this word that ends in an NT and this word that ends in an NT. Moreover, there's this big et right there, which is a conjunction. So I reasoned, oh, they did this and they did that. 
Uh, well, actually, it's not they did because these are third person plural present active indicative, as is this one, mitunt, third person plural present active indicative. So who does these things? The gods. The gods create animos, the souls, accusative plural masculine, the spirits, and them into the bodies of men, a kylo from the sky they send. So gods create souls and they send them into the bodies of men from the sky. Once again, I encourage you, try to translate these sentences without, apart from the verb without diverting much from the order. The English word order, we want that verb earlier, okay? We want the verb earlier. But in Latin, it, it, they want it last. So if you can just insert it earlier and then keep the same word order, it will be helpful. Gods create the spirits and they send, whoop, let's put that in the beginning, them into the bodies of men from the sky. I think it'll be helpful. Number six, ipsi per se, eum in astia, nu per weakerunt. Now we're working with those reflexives. They themselves, this is the intensive, nominative, plural, masculine. They conquered. How do I know that's not conquer? Because what's the word? Winco, wincare, weeki, weak tomb. They conquered. So it's third person plural, present perfect, active indicative. They themselves, per se, by themselves. They conquered him, some other guy, accusative, singular, masculine, recently, new pair, adverb, in Asia. They themselves, by themselves, conquered him in Asia recently. Number seven, in hoc via, kikaro, medicum eus vidit, non suum. Always like this sentence, always. In hoc via, on this road, Cicero, what did he do? He saw. He saw who or what? The doctor. His doctor. Now in English, <laughs> in English, that's not enough information. I saw his doctor. Uh, Cicero, does, do we mean Cicero saw his own doctor or saw someone else's doctor? This next part is totally unnecessary in Latin because it's very clear in Latin. But to help us in English, not his own. Suum modifies medicum, not his own doctor. <coughs> you see, in the Latin, the eus already means not his own. We don't have that in English. Cicero saw his doctor. His own doctor or somebody else's doctor? It's a great sentence for illustrating the difference between eus and suum. Number eight. Nemo filiama kerbam consulis ipsius diu de ligere potuit. New potuit. Nobody was able. Third person, singular, present perfect. Active indicative. Nobody was able de ligere. Uh, to choose, to, to, to esteem, to hold in esteem the filiam, the daughter. Accusative, singular, feminine. What kind of daughter? The bitter, the harsh daughter of the consul himself. Uh, consul ipsius goes with consulis, genitive, singular, masculine, and this modifies consulis, and it's the intensive pronoun. Nobody was able to value any longer, value for a long time, love for a long time in some ways, the bitter daughter of the consul himself. Number nine, he, Kikaronem ipsum secum junxerunt, nam eum semper delixerant. So these guys, oh, and notice, as I was reading this through in Latin, I saw once again two words that end in NT. So they did this and they did that. They junxerunted and they delexeranted. This is interesting because notice that junxerunt is third person singular, uh, plural, excuse me, plural, present perfect, active, indicative. That's junxerunt. But how is delixerant different? It's errant. And this is third person plural, pluperfect, active, 
indicative. So I know the Delixerunting had to happen prior to the Jungserunting. Notice I'm not even translating right now. All I'm doing is looking at the endings, and I know that somebody joined and somebody had loved, esteemed. Who joined? These guys. These guys joined. Uh, and for they had, let's go to the second part of the sentence right now. For they had always loved him. Accusative singular masculine. So these guys had all uh, joined accusative singular Cicero himself with them. That's just a prepositional phrase, with them. And notice the cum goes after when it's a pronoun. So these guys joined Cicero himself with them, for they had always loved, valued, esteemed him. Awkward in English, no doubt about it. We just don't use intensives in that way. Number 10. Femina amica wobis ante lam horam literas suas miserat. And there we go, that miserat again. Stands out. Third person, singular, pluperfect, active indicative. There's miserating, had sent. Who had sent? The, uh, the woman. The woman had sent. What kind of woman? Friendly woman. The friendly woman had sent. Suas literas, her own letters, to you. Wobis, before that hour. That's just the um, ante ilam horam, it's just a prepositional phrase. Wobis, dative, plural, masculine, could be feminine, we don't know yet, or at all. The friendly woman had sent, because in English, notice the her letters. The Romans have a separate word for her, for two different kinds of her. Her own versus hers, okay? Or in this case, adjectives. Uh, an adjective for her own. We don't have that in English. We only have her. The woman sent her letters. I guess we can say her own in this case. Not always, though. But you see my point. The Latin gets rid of confusion. The friendly woman sent her own letters to you before that hour. 11. Ile bonam senectutem habuit, nam per annos bene weekserat. Notice, what did I notice right off the bat? Habuit and weeks are rot. Furthermore, I know that the habuit is in the perfect tense and the weeks are rot is in the pluperfect. So something happened and for, and I recognize this word for, it had happened. So the weeks are rotting happened before the habuiting. Habuit is third person singular, present, perfect, active indicative. Weeks are rot, third person singular, pluperfect, active indicative. Okay, so that man held, possessed, old age, senec, whoops, senec tutam, accusative, singular feminine, what kind of old age? Good old age. That man possessed good old age for, through the years, peranos, he had lived well. That man possessed good old age. For through the years, he had lived well. See how the tenses work in that? The, he's got old age now, but prior to the old age, further back in past, he had lived well. 12. Mater filium bene intellexit, et iram censerat, et arles gains ei propatentia gratias egit. So we've got some couple, like three different words here. Intellexit, et censerat. And we have that same, same alignment as before, intellexit. Third person singular, present, perfect, active indicative. Et iram censerat. Third person singular, pluperfect, active indicative. And then the et adolescens, oh, so I think we've got a switch in subject here. So the mother did those things and the young man did this. Eget, third person singular, present perfect. Active indicative. Uh, it's from the word ago, agare, egi, actum. He gave thanks. So, 
The mother understood well her son, accusative, singular, masculine, and had sensed the anger, accusative, singular, feminine. And the young man, he gave thanks to her, his mom, dative, because that's the only other person mentioned in the sentence, he gave, sen he gave thanks to her for her patience. How kind. The mother understood her son well and had sensed the anger. And the young man gave thanks to her for her patience. Sounds a little sketchy to me, but that's what they say. And do understand the tenses and the use of all these, of this personal pronoun here. A-E refers to the mother. Number 13. Mei cum istis et capite eorum non jungam, nec tu autem te eis cum jungere debes. Now, one thing I notice is this neck. Oh, I was expecting neck, neck. No, nope. neck just means neck. In this case, there's no other NEC. Neck by itself means and not. So we've got two different sentences. Me jungam is the verb. I will join. Now go back in the same order. Me, myself, accusative, singular, masculine, or feminine, with those. So, cum dictates istis, accusative, ablative, plural, masculine, or feminine, and capite, accusative, I've done it twice now, ablative, singular, neuter. I will join myself with them and their boss, their head. Or not, I will not. Sorry, not is in there. I will not join myself with them and their boss. Nor, and not you, moreover, ought to join yourself with them. You ought to join, complementary infinitive, yourself with them. Lots of pronouns. But don't get distracted by the word order. I encourage you, when you can, keep the same word order. It's not quite so vastly different from English. Uh, number 13, I'm sure this is probably number 14. I've got messed up in the numbering. We'll work with it. However, those young men came to Caesar himself yesterday. The men came to Caesar himself uh, yesterday is an adverb. And this is a conjunction. Those young men, do you want to just say adolescentes? I think that's fine. Because that means young men. Adolescentes. The young man. Not just any young man. Ili adolescentes. We'll talk about the young man. Those. Because we need to. This is the demonstrative pronoun. Uh, adjective. Modifying young men. Those young men. Ili adolescentes. That's just fun to say. Furthermore. Came. Third person. Plural. Present perfect, active indicative. Adolescentes, uh, we'll put that at the end. I'll just put it right down here. Weinerunt. Um, Ad to Caesarem ipsum, to Caesar himself, yesterday. So, ili adolescentes, ad Caesarem ipsum, Harry. Weinerunt. Number four, Cicero, therefore, will never jo join his, meaning the other guy's name, with his own. Cicero, therefore, well, let's just write this down. Cicero, igator, will join third person singular future, active indicative, and never just means is uh, not ever, numquam, sorry. Uh, his name, accusative, singular, masculine, no, neuter, with his own name. So Cicero Igator will never join. Uh, numquam, uh, yungo, yungare, yunget will never join his, Cicero, uh, Caesar's name, nomen, 
Eus, meaning Caesaris. What if it was Cicero's own name? If it was Cicero's own name, it would be Suum Nomen. Suum Nomen. But it's not his own name. That's why the person made it clear, meaning not his own name, Caesar's name. Nomen Eus, Caesaris, with his own Cum, uh, cum Suo. Really, because it means cum suo nomine. And you can say with his own name, but the English doesn't have it. I mean, it's... Let's stick with a literal translation here and drop off the nomine. Cicero, therefore, never will join his name, meaning Caesar's, with his own. Fifteen. Cicero always esteemed himself and even, so this is another sentence, and you esteem yourself. Uh, Cicero esteemed, third person, and I think imperfect is fine here. Uh, because, you know, you used to, you would. Third person singular, imperfect, active, indicative. Cicero esteemed himself, se, uh, always, semper, dilig, diligebant, diligebat, et etiam, and even you too, te. Uh, oh, this is present. Third person singular, present. Shame on me for not analyzing it thoroughly before I jump to the translation. Let that be a lesson to you. Present active indicative to diligis. Cicero se semper diligebat et etiam tu te diligis. It's a mouthful. Awkward. We're just practicing these, these pronouns. Cicero used to praise his own books. And now I praise my own books. Cicero used to praise. That's your third person singular, imperfect, active indicative. His own books. Books is your uh, accusative, plural, masculine. His own is an adjective that um, is in the same case as accusative, plural, masculine. And now I praise my own books. Uh, accusatives, plural, masculine. Cicero. Let's put in his, uh, his own books. Libros, suos, laudabat. He used to praise et and I. Let's just throw ego in there for fun. Unnecessary. Now I, nunc, libros, my own books. Meos, laudo. How's that? Cicero libros suos laudabat et ego nunc libros meos laudo. The consul himself had never seen his, meaning Caesar's, books. Cicero, the consul, it's like an appositive, himself. Ipse, I think we're going to use the intensive. The intensive form, uh, so Cicero's nominative, singular, masculine. And then we're going to use the intensive ipse, also nominative, singular, masculine. Had, had seen, never, numquam, uh, but had is the third person singular, pluperfect, active indicative. His book, so not his own, but it is a, a book is accusative, singular, masculine. So, the consul, consul, Kikaro, ipse, had never seen numquam widerat, the book, libros, uh, librum, sorry, it's singular, the librum, Eus, 
of his own his book meaning Caesar's and I would be tempted to write it the consul Cicero uh, the consul himself Librum Eus Numquam Widerat I believe that the Caesar's is just um, is really for the purpose of our, our English understanding when the, because we have to throw that in to say Eus who does his mean and it means Caesar's so I don't think we're meant to translate the Caesar's but you can Sententiae Antiquae Number one Ipse ad eos contendebat equitesque ante se misit Two sentences There's contendebating and there's misiting so he himself extended, reached out, content to them. And he sent his horsemen, the equites, before he himself. Meaning not before somebody else. But he was contending, he was reaching toward them. And sent his, he was stretching. You know, I picture a general. Dun, 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 we're getting closer, we're getting closer. And he was stretching to them. And he sent his horsemen before himself. Ipsi nihil per se sine eo facere potuerunt. They themselves, nominative singular masculine, uh, plural. Blah. They themselves were able, third person plural, present perfect, active indicative. They were able facere, complementary infinitive. This is your present active infinitive. They were able to do nothing per se by themselves sine eo, without him. They were able to do nothing by themselves without him. Don't know what's going on here, but the, they, they, they couldn't do it on their own. Number three, ipse signum suum et literas suas a principio recognoet. He himself recognized, third person singular, present, perfect, active, indicative. He recognized his sign, his own sign, the sign for him, and the le his letters from the beginning, from the outset. Don't know the circumstances. He recognized his own sign and his own letters from the beginning. Maybe somebody's trying to pass him off as somebody else, and he's thinking, uh-uh-uh, those are mine. I know what you're doing here. Number four, quisque ipse se diligit Quod quisque per se sibi carus est. Each, each one, everybody themselves, each himself loves himself. Because each by himself is, <laughs> is dear to himself. Oh my goodness. Awkward indeed, yes. Indeed, each person, indeed, each... Each and every person might be nice, uh, loves himself because each by himself is dear to himself. How many, how many reflexives can you put in here? Obviously, this is just a word, a sentence to get you working with those reflexives. Awkward in English, I think it's awkward in Latin too, frankly, but it's constructed to demonstrate the use of the reflexives. That's all it is. So I'm asking you to accept the awkwardness and, and, and continue on. Just understand the grammar, um, recognizing it's not a great sentence apart from uh, uh, one to demonstrate the reflexive. Five, ex vitio alterius sapiens emendat suum. Out of vice, out of the vice of another, a wise man corrects his own vice. From the vice of another, genitive, singular masculine, this is one of those unus nauta words, and I've run out of words like a crossword puzzle, unus nauta words, from the vice of another, a wise man corrects his own wittium, his own vice. Six, recede in te ipsum. Retire, recede, draw yourself into yourself. Draw yourself into yourself. Fair enough. Seven, animus se ipse alit. 
The mind itself nourishes itself. The animus ipse, the mind itself nourishes itself. A little, again, awkward. It's just demonstrating the use of the, uh, of the reflexives and the intensives. So here we have the intensive ipse, the mind itself, with the reflexive se. And, and so that's what's going on here, and that's the purpose of this four-word sentence, to get you to understand the reflexive versus the intensive, noting that we ourselves, as speakers of English, we use self for both, not so in Latin. Not so in Latin. I mean, in some ways it's weird because Latin makes it more clear, but that makes it more confusing in some ways. Eight, homo doctus in se semper divitias habet. A man learned, this modifies learned, but learned into himself always has riches. If you know yourself, you're much more rich than, you know, Bill Gates or something like that. Ah, it's the, that's the sentiment, that's the philosophy, perhaps. But again, we're working with the reflexives. A man learned in himself always has riches. So those are the sentences for chapter 13. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Thanks.